Welcome to Unstoppable Faith with Dr. Kazumba Charles. This program is designed to inspire you to stand on the Word of God and to help you build unshakable and unstoppable faith in Jesus Christ. Here's your host, Dr. Kazumba. On today's program, again, I have another special guest, uh, and we'll be looking at a very, very important topic that I, I believe will be a blessing to you. Listen to this first of all. You see, to be a human means to try and sometimes fail, to love and sometimes lose, to risk and sometimes uh, regret. They are times when we realize where our choices have brought us and where we, you know, we, we become afraid to be honest with ourselves, with others, with God about how we really are feeling or how we go to where we are. Because what if no one understands you? Yeah. What if uh, they think less of you? What if God is disappointed or you feel like a God is disappointed in you? You know, those questions uh, causes us to think and feel like we are not uh, valuable either to God or to others. Hey, to help me discuss this uh, very important topic today or issue or the topic that will be really zero, uh, focusing on how to discover your true value is Ellen Eddy very special guest she is uh, a social entrepreneur a writer and uh, a speaker and creative uh, director this is a very special woman uh, she's also the founder of the lifestyle clothing brand i want you to get those clothes so worth loving ellen and our work have been featured on many platforms including cnn msnbc the Oprah magazine, just to name a few. Ellen, she is a speaker and uh, writes about personal struggles, community, empathy, entrepreneurship, and uh, the impact of self-doubt. She lives just outside uh, of Atlanta, Georgia. I want you to stay tuned and we will be right back with my guest. a book. I pulled out all of my old journals and I processed past pain and agreements that I had made in the past. I processed mistakes I've made, relationships that I'd been in, and I put it all in one place. I moved to the country and I silenced the noise and I got real honest. And I learned that when you're honest, you discover where your true value is. You discover what it looks like. And I learned it changes everything when you do. Ellen, welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to be here. Honor is all mine, and I'm so glad you are about to share something very important to our viewers around the world, and this is what it is all about. So I'm so thankful for you coming on this program. Yes, I'm so excited to share what God has done in my life and how I've been able to put it into print and bind it up and have it for other people to read. <laughs> Awesome. Now, so we're going to be focusing on, on how to discover your true value. Now, you talk about three concepts in uh, this powerful book that I have right now. Uh, 
And uh, I'll, I'll be talking to you viewers a little bit about this book, how you can uh, actually get a free copy from me by doing one thing that I'm going to ask you. This is by Alan, a powerful book. Now, you talk about three concepts in your book that can help us discover who we are and also know that we are worthy loving. These three concepts are look in, look up, and look out. So we're going to begin with look in. How do we become aware of what is happening inside of us? Mm. Yes, that that whole section of the book was really, oh, it was like therapy for me when I wrote it. Uh, I went through a personal, um, tr many personal trials, and sometimes it takes some really hard seasons of life for us to become aware of what is going on inside of us. And I, I share a part in the book where I talk about showing up to my parents' property, divorced, in debt, heartbroken, not knowing what my purpose was, what God was going to do with it, if God was around, did he care, was he listening? And I show up to my parents' property and I I see this huge tree just laying on the ground. And I used to love this tree. It was always this like beautiful focal piece on my parents' property. And it looked like David and, or in David and Goliath, like Goliath just picked it up and it was laying there and it had a gaping hole inside of it. And with the tree laying on the ground, all of these roots were coming out of the tree and you could peep into the dark hole and you could see that this tree was devastated. And, and I just remember thinking, I'm no different than this tree right now. I am, I'm devastated. I have a gaping hole. People are peering into my life, giving me opinions and judging me and, and it, uh, gossip and all of the things that come with something hard in our life when we are hit was something heavy. And so to look in, it was like that in that in that story that I share about this tree, it was like everything was looking into it. And it was the most impressionable moment for that tree. Things could crawl into it. They can make their home into it that they shouldn't be staying in, into that hole. For me, oh, I when I, my life was uprooted, people were looking in and I had to silence the noise and, and around me. I had to silence the noise around me, protect my thoughts from where they could go. And I needed to be really honest with what I felt about myself and how I saw myself. Did I see myself worthy of love? Did I see myself of value? And, you know, I, I share in the book about um, there's a section called reflection. And I think that we sometimes look physically in the mirror and while we pick ourselves apart of our body or you know we're aging or things are happening to us as we go through time we look in the mirror and we 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 say to ourselves words and lies that we've believed about ourselves since we were seven since we were 12 since we were 20 since that relationship that fell apart or that career that took a completely different pivot that we found our purpose in so talk about um, reflection, but then I talk about unfinished work. There's things in us that are unfinished that maybe we have decided to not finish. Um, maybe we've avoided. I think about, you know, when you see a uh, road construction, I'm all about analogies. When you, you see, a Go ahead. I'm, I'm listening. I'm listening. Yeah. <laughs> I know viewers are following. So don't, don't mistake my, my, my quietness as if I'm not following. I'm attentive what you're saying go ahead go yes ahead. i love i just love talking about this because i was in such a rock bottom looking at myself and letting people look into me in such poor ways of that did not model the truth of how god designed me my my sense of self-worth and respect was so low and i had no clue how to find it and so i i think about sometimes these homes you know that we see that are under construction for years maybe there's a house that you can think of that you're like what are they going to pick back on construction on that house it's like they started on it and then they stopped whether it was you know because of finances or resources think that to ourselves we have things to work on that are unfinished and god wants to work with us in them 
Oh, that is that is so powerful. Now, you also talk about discomfort. I want you to continue on that and talk about um, uh, discomfort because in that question we ask, we you know, in uh, look in, you discuss also discomfort. Go ahead and uh, share on that as well. Yes. Oh, goodness. Sometimes we have to be completely uncomfortable to face those things to look in. I remember a time and I share this in the book, I remember a time where everything, it felt like, I'm sure you've experienced this and anybody listening has experienced where you just wonder, can one more thing go wrong? Like, I, like if, if one more thing goes wrong, I don't know if I can handle it. And that was this day. And I remember I was at a crossroads and I was going to choose something. I was going to make a decision that was going to not only make things worse, but continue down. I was going to, I was going to be on this path of continual destruction because I was so uncomfortable because I was just in so much discomfort. And I remember calling my mom and I remember telling her, I think I'm going to just do this. And she says, no, you're not. And my mom doesn't tell me what to do. <laughs> I guess she's learned with three daughters, you know, I'm one of three. And she's like, no, you are not. And I'm like, mom, my life looks like this. Look at this resume. It's like debt, heartbreak, divorce, like nothing, like like what would be wrong? I mean, everything is already wrong. And sometimes we make choices in, in our discomfort that we think it won't be so bad, but it actually adds to the slow drip of destruction. And my mom said to me, she said, if you can control it, you can control it, Erin. And it was like a check in my spirit. And I was like, I need to control some of my choices that I'm making out of being extremely uncomfortable and uncomfortable is such a a light word to my circumstance but it was the only word that i could really garner with what i know other people experience in some of their own discomfort we make choices we choose vices we drink too much we overindulge in things because we are uncomfortable because we're filling a void because we do not like how uncomfortable our life is and so when you look into yourself and you find all these things that are going on in a, in a state or in a in a season that's been hard you you start to you start to realize what you're telling yourself and the choices that you're making out of what you're telling yourself and so that's what the whole look in section is all about and you you even uh, go uh, in depth of that and uh, i want uh, the viewers to get the, the copy of the book, you talk about hard to bear. It was just simply hard for you to bear what was going on. That brings us to this other question I have for you uh, that you include in those uh, three powerful concepts about look in. Now this one is look up. So my question to you is how can we understand where our worth comes from? Mm, great question. We have to first understand, for me and my story, I had to first understand where I was finding my worth before I knew where the true source of my worth comes from. And I was finding it in success. I was finding it or lack of success. I was finding it in reputation and status and relationships and community. And I was finding it on all of these things only. And I remember coming to a point where I was really angry. I was defying God. I was angry at him. And I never thought that I could bring all of the stuff that I have looked at to him because I thought that I needed to perform a certain way, be a certain way, act a certain way. And, you know, I was always this like good Christian girl growing up to the point of when I got married. And, and so then I find myself, I felt like I performed all, all of these things and yet it left my life here. And so I was finding my sense of worth in the areas that I was never supposed to find my sense of self-worth in. So I went to God and I just said, God, I'm angry. I'm angry at you. I'm angry. Where were you? You say you're my protector. And it was like, it was like anger and a plea. It was, it was heartbreak and it was, it wasn't even entitlement to God. It was just heartbreak and, and just 
angry at what is going on. So I went to him and I said, where were you in all of this? Where were you when he said this or when this happened in my life or when she did this or when a community of friends betrayed me in this? Like I, I just went to him with my list of anger. And I, I never thought that an, an invitation to God with ang- like an anger, an angry invitation to God would be something he was so confident in welcoming me with, welcoming me with and, and welcoming and holding me in those moments. So I, when I went to him and I, I gave him all of this stuff, I remember ha- talking to my dad one day and I just admitted it. I'm angry. Anger, anger. <laughs> I was just so angry. <laughs> and my dad was like, you can't be angry at God, Aaron. God loves you. He loves you. And I'm like, well, I'm angry. So you can't tell me not to be like I am. So what do I do with these feelings? And in Look Up, I talk about endurance. I talk about how um, once we realize, once we accept that God, he so badly wants to be in whatever feeling we are in. He wants us to know that he is confident and he can handle it. He is he is the equipper of our feelings. But yet I don't think I don't know if I can handle I can't give him my feelings, but I can't. <laughs> and that's what I learned in and, and that's what I write about in Look Up. No, you got go, you you got a lot of stuff to cover there. I, 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 I want us I want us to go there. I want us to go there. So you talk you sharing now on endurance right now. If you have some more stuff to add to that, go ahead. But I want you to move on uh, and touch on uh, sabotage, as well as uh, healing, lies, uh, loneliness, which we've eroded to that. So just uh, dig a little bit deeper on that, because uh, you have no idea uh, where many people struggle is to when the going is getting tough, like what you went through, is to find that you know, position or energy to endure. And then we began, we begin to sabotage where we need to go or other people actually begin to do that for us. Then in the mix of that, we need to find healing from what has happened. Then there is those lies uh, and then you feel lonely. So please, th- this is a powerful book and I encourage you as you're listening to this program, come on, I will let you know how to get this copy and how to get many more uh, for those who are watching right straight from Ellen here. Go ahead, Ellen, break it down for us. Yes. So, so within, when you start to look in, you got all the mess, right? Then you look up, you go to God and you're like, I'm angry. I have all these feelings. What do I do with them? And then you realize he's trustworthy to help you come through from the, uh, come and go through the other side to finding healing and finding comfort and finding rest. But in that time, it takes an immeasurable amount of endurance. I share a story about my parents and they manufactured furniture for 40 years. And, and I'm a, from a long line of entrepreneurs, oh, fifth generation. And so I've seen a lot of endurance and resiliency in my upbringing. And so uh, my parents, I, I share with that, I share in the book about how 10 years in, to pursuing a furniture business and the ups and downs and the, and the just the inconsistencies and the working with people and being leaders and you know everything that comes with it their their factory burns to the ground in front of their eyes and my parents i remember um coming coming going to dinner with my parents we're sitting there for dinner my mom gets a phone call Sometimes that's what it is, right? It's like, it's that one, it's the one thing that happens in our life that like changes everything in an instant. And I know this last year, we've been through so many different changes. And in that moment, my mom gets a phone call and it's the factory is on fire. We go over there and it went, goes up in complete flames because it's made of lacquer and it's made of wood and lightning took it out like that. My parents asked the question, what are we going to do? Are we going to do this again? Are we going to continue doing a furniture business? Because we've made it up to this point. We financially can't. We're emotionally exhausted. We ha- we are now in a hole of debt. They had just switched over their insurance to a new building. And this building had been sold. So they had no insurance on all of their equipment. I mean, it was a devastating time for my family. And my mom and dad said, 
How can we not? And they kept pushing forward with God beside them to then pursue owning a business for 28 more years. And they did it with the decision. It's going to be hard. It's going to be messy. We're going to have to rebuild in so many ways our reputation. We're going to have to rebuild with our customer base. We're going to have to rebuild with our equipment and our employees, like just the morality of our, our, our work culture but it's worth it because we know God by our side can. So I talk about that with endurance and how that applies when we're starting to rebuild our life. And then that's when I kind of go into talking about sabotage because sometimes, you know, sometimes we avoid intimacy with God because we are scared to be fully seen. So we sabotage that beauty of being seen by him with other void fillers, you know, whether it's like, I'm going to go out for dinner and or engage with some people or or fill my calendar up for you know where I'm there's no free time for me those little things sabotage our intimacy with him and and when we don't pay attention to our schedules or the people we're hanging around or the vices that we're holding on to it's a slow drip to sabotaging this beautiful intimacy that we can have with him because ultimately we're scared to be seen because we 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 think that if we bear all, if we're vulnerable, if we show him the lies that we're believing about ourselves, he couldn't possibly love us. He would see us as defected or flawed or or we don't have a, a bigger purpose that we always desired and hoped for because we revealed it. But the truth is, he knows all of those things. He just wants us to be honest. I love what Psalm 116 says where it talks about God. He guards the simple hearted and by definition, simple hearted is honest. He just wants us to be honest with what we're going through, with what we feel. And so in Look Up, I talk about that a little bit more. But then within that, I talk about loneliness. Because when you start to like really carve out um, some of the choices that you're making, you recognize you're sabotaging intimacy. You recognize you've got a bunch of lies that you're dealing with. You know, you recognize that you're just trying to push through the next day. In fact, you're just trying to wake up and take a shower maybe and shave your legs and brush your teeth. You know, like you're just, there are times in our life where we're just trying to persevere and have resilience in when we've been hit with something hard that it can feel lonely and that we want, sometimes we want a physical presence of a person, you know, sometimes it's, it's oh God, I know that you're there. I know you're omnipresent, but I need somebody physically here to just hug me, you know, yes. cause chemically that does something to our brain. Like we just go through loneliness and God wants to know about our loneliness. He wants to know when we're lonely. He wants to know all of those things. And so then in choo and the chapter choose, it's just the last section of the, the, the last chapter of, look out or look up mm -hmm. chooses the last section of look up i talk about really surrendering with a heavy heart all of these things as you're working through them and giving it to him and recognizing that is he wore all of these things mm -hmm. long ago and he loves us so much that it just makes his love more intense and more wild the fact that we can be completely honest with everything, all of the intimate parts of us. And he loves us and has a plan for us. He doesn't want to punish us. He wants to show us how he can continue to sanctify us. And we live out of that recovery and that redemption. And so that is, in a nutshell, what Look Up is. <laughs> that, that is powerful. And you know, especially with the loneliness as well, uh, with what is, you know, what the world is going through right now, the pandemic and all that stuff, you find that people sometimes can f uh, can feel so lonely and with all the things that are going on in their lives, they feel so lost as well. I just love the way you shared on, uh, you know, the look up and uh, how you yourself, your personal experience uh, uh, helped you to get through those moments. Now, we're going to go to the uh, to the other concept that you write in this book. But before we do, there's just somebody joining us right now, whether by the way of television or radio. I just want you to say a quick encouragement to those who feel lonely, to those 
or or feel like lost yeah oh well then you're not alone and it feels like it right now it feels like nobody may understand the level of feelings and pain and aches that your heart is just maybe in shatters right now um and it's shattered so just many little baby pieces and you're like how do i even glue these together how do i become whole you know you wonder will i laugh again will i ever find enjoyment with another person again and um, will i ever experience true community like i used to have again i just want to say you're not alone um but i also want to share that give yourself uh, grace along the journey of discovering your true value with the Lord. Because the reason I say it's discovering your true value and how it changes everything is that it's a continual discovery. You, you don't arrive. And so I want to encourage the the tired, the weary, the lonely, the just drained and exhausted soul. I have been there and I have waves of that still. I don't believe we ever arrive. I think circumstances take us through understanding more of where we are finding our worth and our and where we have faith or we feel faithless or that it shows us and reveals to us the intimacy with our relationship with God and and how that can increase always, but we don't ever arrive. And so I just want to encourage the person listening as I share these awakenings in my heart I still have days where I haven't arrived to some things. And so give yourself grace and celebrate the baby steps. The baby steps are, you know, maybe it's getting out of bed and taking a shower. Maybe the baby step is saying no to that friend that is draining you. Maybe the the small step is deciding to take a break from drinking right now or it's taking a break from you know, maybe it's that coworker that is just, you know, triggers you in some way. The baby steps are like stripping away those things, maybe putting them to the side for now and just giving yourself grace to heal and bringing God into that. But knowing that you're not going to ever fully arrive, but God doesn't want you to fully arrive to this picture perfect thing. And that's ultimately what I want to just reaffirm you you won't fully ever arrive and that is part of discovery it's being grace giving to yourself in that journey powerful stuff powerful stuff and uplifting we're gonna go to our last question here that we have look out you write in your book about look out how can we embrace our past and empower our future well, shame definitely wants to keep us in our past, doesn't it? It wants to just hold us there. I have had to, I, w I went through trauma therapy and I've read shame, like books on shame. And uh, I have a wonderful spiritual formation um, teacher and uh, just a mentor of mine that has continually spoken truth about who God is in my life. And I, I learned with look out, it's so important to find those people in your life that are truth seekers, that are honest about their own personal struggles, honest about their story and their journey, because they then can sit with you and yours. They point to the to the truth when you feel you are coated in shame, because shame will keep you in this, this bondage from being able to really experience the freedom what the Lord wants us to live out. And so in Look Out, I talk about how do we, who is safe? Who's a safe person? I talk about um, how we need to protect what's going on inside, but then we also want to go and be friends to other people that have gone through the same or similar waves of feelings as ours maybe different circumstances completely and that's the difference and that's what i wrote because my story is so specific to heartbreak divorce and debt but ultimately we've all gone through something that has completely rocked our identity and our self-worth and so look out is talking about how who is safe who we can bring in and then how do we protect this stuff that we've learned about ourselves and build that muscle of strength so then we can go and be a light 
for others. And Look Out was actually a really hard section for me to write because I had so um, much new healing that had just occurred in, in me writing it. I talk about um, breath. And I talk about breathing and getting reacclimated to a new way of thinking. I share about how I went to New Mexico and I was with my family and I was, it was actually just after a, just a really hard circumstance in my life. And I'm there in New Mexico and I'm at 7,000 feet above sea level and if you've ever been to Colorado or any place that has, you know, your your breath is different, you walk up um, uh, just as like a, a set of stairs and you're like, my lungs, <laughs> that's how I felt in New Mexico. And I share about how I couldn't help but think I'm there. My breath can get re- reacclimated to where I'm at. I'm surrounded by love and family and they're just so kind to me during this time and probably I'm sure that they were just like oh when is she ever going to get it together but they never <laughs> they never demonstrated that kind of self they just were always selfless with their love for me which is a, which just can't be rare for families um, <laughs> but yes. they were so kind to me in that time but I just remember thinking I just get need to get my breath reacclimated like and so I went to an oxygen bar where they give you oxygen and and with my mom who has asthma And I couldn't help but think about this story with being in New Mexico and my breath becoming reacclimated and how when we've kind of been living a certain lifestyle for a while, it's going to be hard for us to get reacclimated to our new way of thinking, right? It's going to be really hard to get reacclimated to the way we pursue friendships, the way we have boundaries with people, the way that we, and that's why I talk about in risk. I talk about Entering into relationships after you've been betrayed is a risk. It is such a risk, isn't it? It's yes. scary. And it's like, could I get hurt again? I don't know. And so it's getting reacclimated. And so with breath and risk, I talk about how we we just readjust our frame of thinking um, because we are living a new lifestyle and a new way of thinking. Now, Ellen, you, you share so many powerful stuff taking risk, especially after you have been disappointed or you've gone through stuff, you know, to trust again. I remember my, uh, my, 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 myself uh, when I went through some um, situation in within the church or in the body of Christ. Uh, uh, when I came out of that situation uh, and I was in a meeting, somebody asked me, what is one of the things that you struggle most? You know, because uh, sometimes, you know, when people, they see you are successful, they think you don't fight these battles. So I said mine was, uh, I have a mistrust for certain men of God. And it shocked people there. But because of the trauma of what I went through and the healing came first after talking about it. And secondly, having people like you've mentioned, having people that uh, you really know they are for you. And then also forgiveness, where you have to forgive. And that's the question I want to, you know, uh, uh, quickly hear in, uh, in a minute that you could share on uh, because you write it in your book, Look Out, Forgiveness. Just share a little bit about that. I'm so grateful that you brought that up and shared that because I too share a very similar story in regards to a community of people um, that identified as Christians and I felt so um, betrayed in so many ways and so to learn to to release and to forgive was going to be very hard for me to do because I just I was I just still had some residue of anger and skepticism and judgment and just uh, avoidance and a large guard up. So anybody that re- resembled some of these people in my life, in my past, I was just triggered by, you know, it's like almost I had PTSD from, and I talk about forgiveness and how just because we forgive does not mean that what that person did to us is okay. And I, once I realized I allowed myself to be angry. I shared it with the Lord. And then I, with therapy and mentors in my life and processing what does, what does forgiveness truly mean? 
It's releasing the fact that I can't control, you know, I can't control anybody that's going to do harm to me, but I can protect myself and have healthy boundaries. And, you know, we can do all of these different things, but it's not saying that what they did to me was okay. And by doing that, I can learn then how do I extend this grace and this forgiveness that has been so radical that I've received from God, I can extend that to them. And I can do that and say, still what you did was not okay. But I know that I know that the Lord and what he's forgiven me of, I can release this person and choose to forgive them and know that he did what he did to me, to them too. And that's something that I also talk about in the look out section. Now, where can the people get the copy? Where would you want them to get the copies of your book? Yes, if you go to soworthloving.com slash book, you can find it there and it, and it gives you all of the different places that you can buy depending on where you are located to. So you can get on Amazon and Barnes and Noble and Books a Million and all of the different book, the large book providers too. I encourage you to get this book. I was reading it last night. I find it really, really powerful and it's going to help you overcome any situations in your life because you begin to understand certain things that you need to do and certain things that you don't have to do and then with God all things are possible. Ellen, I just want to thank you so very much for coming on this program. Thank you so much for having me. This was so wonderful. And to our viewers, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord watch over you. I hope and pray that this program continues to be a blessing to you. And we shall see you again next week. Until then, shalom, shalom. Faith is the currency of the kingdom of God. Thank you for tuning in to Unstoppable Faith with Dr. Kazumba Charles. If this program has been a blessing to you, write to us at life at and share your testimony.